Oh, hey guys. Today we're going to do a, uh, well, I guess it's called an Intel Rapid Storage Technology Driver install because with a lot of people, they're actually having issues with uh, reinstalling Windows 10 or 11. And then when they get to their partitioning table menu, like what you see here in the picture, nor no, normally 95% of the times your hard drive should be showing up here with a few partitions if you're running Windows 10, 8, or 11. And it doesn't matter. You should see about four or five of them in here. But now you're not seeing them so this is actually i think the first time i've actually had issues with the the hp series because for this model here it's for the hp 15-dw 3007c8 um and you know i know that you know acer and and asus is having a you know they do that a lot with their newer models where if you're trying to reload windows you ain't going to see your hard drive unless you download and install that or disable vmd you know, Victor, Mary, David in your bias, and then you might be able to see, but in this model here, you can't do that because I went into the bias and checked those things. So, um, so you know, I hope that this is going to help you guys out because for this specific model, I can guarantee you 100% this is going to work because, um, you know, I, I followed even my older videos because I had done them for Acer and stuff like that. So what Intel is doing, which is really pissing me off, is that what they're doing, even with the old links that I used to have that was actually active, that were that that were zip files what intel did was actually end up putting them as an executable file and when you actually have a .exe file for a download you can't extract that that you know those files onto your flash drive because you need it on your flash drive when you're installing these drivers so that when well, you're going through the process of browsing through your install right here when it says load driver here when you browse through your flash drive it will show the drivers available you know and you're going to see two of them which i will show you a little bit later but just to give at least explanation of what's going on. So at least, you know, um, so that you, you know, so you can follow my steps. So um, what the first thing, what we're going to do is what we're going to do is we're going to go into the bias and, and, and disable the secure boot. So what, once you power up your system, you know, just pull down the escape key or you can press the F10 or the F10 function, because if you hit the escape button, it gives you these options here. So, which is F10. So if you want to go to the bias, hit the F10. And then what you want to do afterwards is you want to go into the, uh, and this is what will show up into your bias. So you go to your boot options, and then all you do is just disable the secure boot. Because as you can see here, you just use your up and down arrow key, navigate down to this section here under secure boot, press enter once, and then it'll actually give you an option to enable or disable. Disable the bloody thing, go to exit, which is right beside here, save your changes and reboot the system. And then, you know, what you can do is, well, yeah, maybe I should have actually got you to do the uh, to download the file. So, what we'll do is I'm going to show you. I'll, I'll what I'll do is I'll provide the link for you under the description, and plus I'll also pin my comment for you to go down to download the drivers. Because if you go to Intel's website, like I said, you ain't going to find it. I actually found the new one that was extractable through Asus's website. So that was that. That will be the link I'll actually be providing for you guys. So once you follow the link, just remember, right? You know. It, when when you just remember that when you are following and listening to my tutorial here, just just have yourself make sure you have a thumb drive. I'm assuming you already have your bootable Windows 10 or Windows 11, you know, installation. You know, and uh, you know, I, I prefer to put Windows 10 onto this because Windows 10 is compatible with this this with i3 systems. So when you're running Windows 11, you're probably meeting the mid, the minimum system requirements just to run that. You know, you know, just just to run the operating system, but not efficiently. You know, as for performance, why you're not probably going to get a lot of performance on the Windows 11 install for this. So that's why I downgraded my client to Windows 10 and it runs a lot better. You know, so I hope that you guys take note of that because I've been doing this for 25 years. When it comes to Windows 10 and 11, sometimes it'll give you an option to upgrade to 11. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to perform optimally, you know, if you're putting upgrading to Windows 11 because it might just slow it down. You know, and give you other problems with installing drivers for your your printer and other things that might not be compatible to, in the Windows 11 environment. So if you, you know, if you can do it, bring it down to 10, or if you start off with 10, then stick with 10. You know, and uh, you know, like I said, go to the Aces website, follow the link. You know, when you go on that, when you click on that link, or just highlight the whole link and just open in a new tab, you will see the download button at the bottom right. Just download the the file. You know, and what you do is make sure that your USB flash drive that you actually have your Windows 10 or 11 plugged into your 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 uh, your other system that you're doing this from, you know, or the current system before you're doing the install. 
and just extract all of those files onto your USB thumb drive that has the Windows 10 or 11 installed into it. And then once you have done that, plug it into your system and then power up the system and then hit the, the, uh, the F9 key, which will actually give you the boot option to boot to, so that it can detect your Windows 10 or 11 bootable flash drive. And then once you get into that, you know, once you get into this menu here, you just click on load driver. And then once you load, when you choose select the load driver, navigate your, your options to your flash drive. So whether it be like the drive letter E or D or F or whatever. And then once you select that, this is what you should see. You should see this. And then you, I didn't actually have to install the Intel, the, the VMD driver, the uh, the RST one, the bottom one. I literally just did the first one as soon as it, when, when I selected this, you double click on it with your left, your, your left mouse, your left clicker, and it starts to do this. It starts to install the drivers for it. And then in, once it started installing the drivers for it, when it went to the full 100% to the far right-hand side, and then now it shows me my two my, my hard drive. And I didn't realize this client here had two hard drives. So we actually had a one terabyte hard drive, and he actually had a 120 gig hard drive. So just remember, right, guys? I mean, if you guys haven't backed up your data, make sure you back up your data, you know, before you do this. Because you, for you to reinstall the, news, the new Windows 10 or 11, you have to delete all your partitions. So if you're seeing a bunch of partitions like you're seeing here, you know, just delete them all. You know, as you can see, like I said here, there's 120 gig here. There's a one terabyte here. So I deleted them both because he told me he had the, he did, he wasn't using the secondary drive and he barely fills up his hard drive. And just to, just to make note um, of this installation, you know, the 120, 128 gig is most likely going to be the NVMe or the M.2 SSD. And the one terabyte that they're providing here is probably just a cheap, mechanical two and a half inch mechanical drive you know they don't use it give you two m.2s or two nvme ssds and they normally with this type of crazy stupid setup they always give you a small hard drive to, to run your operating system which you will fill it up very very quick you know and then you're gonna have to start installing all your stuff onto the one terabyte but the best thing to do is with this if you know I, what i'm gonna tell the client is to upgrade his hard drive and then go to a you know one terabyte later down the road if he wants to um, but right now, he just really wanted to get the system up and running because he really needs it for other things. And he doesn't use a lot of it, this system, for, for anything big, no videos and stuff like that. So I, then I told him, I said, then you'd be fine with the 120. You know, so like I said, so going back to this here, once you, you know, delete all the partitions here, you will only see two physical partitions, the 120 and then the one terabyte. You know, uh, format them all, create the new partitions, format them all, then I would choose the 120 if I were you. If you have the same model, then you most likely have the same setup as he does. You know, and then just choose 120 gig SSD to run your Windows. And then you just follow the steps. And the one thing I really want to make important note, or the three things, is that when you're installing Windows with this specific system, which is really stupid also, um, your trackpad will not work because it needs to install the drivers for that. So in, in the installation of this, I had to use a, a USB mouse and also um, and once you go through the Windows installation portion of it, like I said, your trackpad won't work and your Wi-Fi won't work. So this is going to cause a problem for you because in a lot of systems that you do in the new Windows 10 or 11 install, the wireless drivers are usually pre-installed so that it can at least get you up and running so that you can install drivers for the other for the rest of the components, for the chipset drivers, you know, uh, all of the other stuff. But well, not with this model here, you won't have it. So the thing is what you're going to do is you're going to need to either download the drivers for your wireless 6 device, you know, the Wi-Fi 6, you know, a Wi-Fi uh, adapter in, inside the system before you do the full install so that you won't run into problems because I can guarantee you 100% you're not going to have any internet. You know, going through the beginning, once you get to the desktop, you're going to be really screwed where your trackpad won't work. Your Wi-Fi 6 adapter that's built onto this motherboard won't work. You know, so so please don't do anything here. Just make sure that you download your drivers if you're in the Windows environment or before doing any of these steps. Just go to your to Google or go to HP.com and just do a search for your HP 15 dash. I think it was what? Yeah, DW3007CA model and download the drivers for your trackpad, you know, uh, and then, and for your Wi-Fi 6 adapter. And then also put that into your, um, 
you know, put that in and, and just extract it or just put it inside of your, your, your Windows 10 or 11 flash drive also so that you can easily install it and actually have access to it once you get to the desktop on your new install. And then you can get yourself back up and running and install the drivers to the rest. Because for this model here, once you get those two little hiccups done with the trackpad and the wire, the Wi-Fi 6 adapter, all of the other drivers that's required for this motherboard can be installed by going through the Windows update. So just remember that. You know, there, there's no other hiccups besides that because I just I just finished it with this system here. And I really hate the fact that these companies are doing this to clients. <coughs> Sorry, I got to get some liquid here. Because it really causes a problem, even for techs like me. You know, sometimes, you know, you just think you're going to do a, a basic install. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. And then they go through with this BS. You know, so I mean, if you have any questions or anything, um, please just just write it in the comments, you know, in, in in the in the video below, and then I'll 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 do my best to get back to you guys to assist you with that. But with all of the steps that I said, you know, you know it, it should just work for you if you actually have the same model or very similar model. Because if you're having an issue and not seeing your hard drive, just follow the link to Aces's website and download those files, extract it to your Windows 10 or 11. USB flash drive, and then you'd be good. And also download your wire, your Wi-Fi 6 drivers and your trackpad drivers if you don't have a USB mouse or if you don't have a secondary USB wireless adapter. I actually had a wireless USB adapter that I used for spares that that, that were running in the Windows 7 and Windows 8 environment. So, the, you know, the, the drivers are automatically installed by Windows 10 and 11. So I was able to get through that without an issue. But like I said, if you don't have an extra USB wireless adapter, that you can plug into your USB port and stuff like that, you're going to be in trouble because you're going to need that. Because if you can't move your trackpad, you don't have a USB mouse, you're going to be really screwed. Okay, guys? So I hope that helps you guys out. Have a good day. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.